This tutorial is designed to show students the relationship which exists between the international capital flows and the trade balance in an open economy. So in an open economy, as well as the closed economy, financial markets and good markets are closely related. So to see this relationship, we must rewrite the national income accounts identity in terms of both savings and investment. So to write savings and also investment, we subtract C and G from both sides leaving us with y minus c minus g is equal to i plus net exports. If we recall from previously that y minus c minus g is national savings, so it's the sum of private savings and public savings, um, we can rewrite our national accounts identity as s equal to i minus nx. We simply subtract i from both sides, resulting in savings minus investment is equal to net exports. So in essence, our capital balance is equal to our trade balance. This form of the national income accounts identity shows that the economy's net exports must always equal the difference between its savings and investments. We'll now explain these separately and then bring them together. So the right hand side of the identity is comprised of net exports and another name for net exports is this trade balance. It essentially tells us how much our trade in goods and services departs from the benchmark of equal imports and exports. The left-hand side of the identity is the difference between domestic savings and domestic investment, which we'll call net capital outflow. Net capital outflows equal the amount of that domestic residents are lending abroad minus the amount that foreigners are lending to us. So if net capital outflows are positive, then the economy's savings exceed its investment and it is lending the excess to foreign nations. If net capital outflows is negative, the economy is experiencing a capital inflow. So investment exceeds savings, and the economy is financing this extra investment by borrowing from abroad. Remember that in a closed economy, savings must always equal investment, but that in an open economy, additional capital can flow to and from the country. Thus, our net capital outflows represent the international flow of funds to finance capital accumulation. The national income accounts identity shows that net capital outflows always equal the trade balance. So as it's an identity, this must always be the case. Therefore, if S minus I and NX are positive, we have a trade surplus. In this instance, we are net lenders in the world financial markets and we are exporting more goods than we are importing. So in essence we are saving more than investing, the excess savings is being sold, sent abroad, and we are also exporting more goods than we are importing. If S minus I and NX are negative, we actually have a trade deficit. In this case we are borrowers in the world financial markets and importing more goods than we are exporting. So in this instance S is less than I, so our savings do not finance finance all our investment and we have to borrow money from abroad and we are also importing more goods than we are exporting. So this identity shows that the international flow of funds to finance capital accumulation and the international flow of goods and services are mirror images of each other. If one is positive the other will be positive. So if domestic savings exceed domestic investment, the surplus savings is used to make loans to foreigners. So we essentially have excess savings and we are loaning these abroad. Foreigners require these loans because we are providing them with more goods and services than they are providing us, i.e. we are exporting to them more than we are importing from them. So they need to the loans from us to buy goods and services. So we are also running at a trade surplus. However, if investment exceeds savings, the extra investment must be financed from, by borrowing from abroad. And these foreign loans enables a country to import more goods and services than we actually export. That is, we run a trade deficit. The link between these two components of the National Income Accounting Framework can be seen here in this current table, where, in an instance of trade surplus, net exports are greater than zero. So we are exporting more than we are importing. In this instance, y is greater than c plus i plus g. If this is the case, savings must be greater than investment, recalling that savings is y minus c minus g. Therefore, in this instance, net capital outflows must be greater than 
zero. Our savings are greater than our investment. Then we have the case of balance trade. Exports equals imports. Net exports therefore must equal zero. In this case, if net exports are zero, we essentially have what we see under the closed economy of y is equal to c plus i plus g. If we bring c and g across the equal sign, we get savings, and savings equal investment. Our net capital outflow is equal to zero. For a trade deficit, we have exports less than imports, so net exports are less than zero. y therefore is less than c plus i plus g. Bring c and g across the equal sign or across the less than sign to get savings, and we see savings is less than investment. In this instance, then our net capital outflows are less than zero. So here we can see the close relationship between international capital flows and the trade balance. That concludes this tutorial. Further tutorials are available on YouTube.